Thank you, Rod. Um, Marty Schaefer wanted to be here tonight, of course, uh, but unfortunately he's at home recuperating from uh, an illness. Uh, hopefully watching the show, so get well soon, Marty. And uh, he, of course, wants to wish uh, the best of luck to everyone, especially Rita McKenzie, who's back. Thank you. I'm back for your last show. How rude. I know. You're back, uh, <laughs> you're back, to, uh, back in New York and I back am. at the ballroom I starting am. tomorrow night for two weeks. Big two weeks. Yes, indeed. Are you indeed. glad to be back in New York? I actually am. Yes, I am. I miss New York. Yeah? Yeah, I do. Where have you been uh, schlepping? I just came from Indianapolis uh, for the Cole Porter Centennial, the first of the three uh, centennial celebrations. Cole's going to be 100 years old on uh, June 9th. And, and looks uh, fabulous, too. He don't looks you think? great. <laughs> <laughs> His relatives are very glad. <laughs> <laughs> now he's dead. Anyway, <laughs> for all you who I know don't we're going to confuse people. We're going to sit at home going, oh my he God. He died. He died a long time ago, but he's adorable. Anyway, and they're having the centennial for him. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was a resident of Peru, Indiana. So we did this big celebration in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. and we're at Carnegie Hall. So sandwiched in between that, we decided to come into the ballroom for two weeks and do a, do a segment of Cole Porter. We're doing a lot of other things, but we're highlighting a segment of Cole Porter, which makes a lot of sense. Yes, it's indeed, it does. Perfectly logical. You, bet. Uh, you were at a benefit tonight with John Schneider. Who I was, on was our Hearts and Voices at the Blue Angel. It was uh -huh. a wonderful benefit for AIDS and. I think they're raising a lot of money. There were a lot of people there, and a lot, drinks were flowing, and food was flowing, and yeah. and raffles were flowing, and auctions were flowing. So I think they've made a lot of money, which Terrific. is wonderful. Yeah. Terrific. And I understand yeah. the AIDS walk yesterday was a huge success. I heard. Also. I heard. Yeah. So absolutely. So onward and upward. You bet. They're going to do more, I think. Call yeah. me Ethel. Um, you bet. Gee, I wonder who this is about. <laughs> oh, maybe Ethel Waters. Maybe uh, Ethel Merman. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> who was no. it who said there was a couple of, couple of years ago at uh, uh, the Mac Awards? Uh -huh. and I think it was Bruce Hopkins who got up and said uh, one of his little quips. So it said, went something like, "It's so nice to live in a in, in an age when a female can be a female impersonator." <laughs> I wasn't there. I was out in Pasadena. I didn't know he said that. Uh -huh. I don't think he was directly referring to you. <laughs> uh, but at that point, it was interesting because Julie, uh, uh, Ju uh, yeah. Julie Shepard had Julie, uh, right. uh, the Garland show. That's right. And you were doing Call Me Ethel. Mm -hmm. And just all of a sudden, who knew? Who thought? Who knew? And then it stopped. Except Ethel. for Call Me Ethel. Yeah. Call Me Ethel has continued, thank God. And yeah. been and tremendously successful for Very you. Very successful, Now, yeah. you've played it in different venues. You've done Very it uh, right. in cabarets. Yes, and, and then we moved to theater. We did the Pasadena Playhouse, and we right. traveled the country in uh, the Tampa Bay Performing Arts Center, and, oh, my goodness, uh, uh, off-Broadway at the American Jewish Theater for five months. And we also have done casinos, which is very interesting. I <laughs> bet it is. Yes, when they asked us to do it, we, uh, we were surprised because we weren't sure that that was the venue for us because Ethel had gone to Vegas and she bombed. So we weren't sure that that was the venue. But they come in droves and they love it. We've been to Atlantic City three times, mm -hmm. twice, and we're going back for a third time. They put their chips on the table and they fold their arms and <laughs> there they are. <laughs> <laughs> Taking a break from those slot machines, you, you have to cry them away. You can uh, hear them in the background. <laughs> in, in New York, um, of course, everyone knows who Ethel Merman was. That's right. Um, she's truly one of the greatest Broadway stars ever. She is. Yeah. Uh, do people know outside of New York? Yeah, they really know. Uh, we came from Denver in January, and there were so many, so many ovations. I had to stop and repeat songs. I mean, it was that thrilling. It, uh, out of town. People uh, very rarely got to see Ethel Merman, and so they appreciate her even more. And you'd be surprised in the heartlands and in the Midwest and in the West. You know, they, they just really, really love the music. I think, I don't know if they're behind the times or, or whether they just want to stay in those times, but, I, but it's Ethel Merman embodies and personifies all that music that, that they just loved so much. And uh, they and can't get enough of it. It's Quite frankly, I'm lucky to get back to New York, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone. I want to go back to New York. <laughs> get we'll, away from me. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, uh, speaking of music that they love and Cole Porter Centennial, I believe that we have a clip uh -oh. uh, <laughs> featuring one of Mr. Porter's songs. Oh, great. For Ethel Merlin. Terrific. Anything goes, mm -hmm. right? You bet. Let's take a look. Okay. I met Mr. Cole Porter. Nice to meet you, Mr. Porter. Ethel Merman here. Hey, I hear you haven't written my part yet, huh? Well, I got a couple of ideas. 
And listen, if you're having any trouble remembering anything, I take a pretty fast steno. Isaac Pittman method. <laughs> oh, an idea already, huh? Well, just happen to have my gear along here. Girl Scouts, you know. Okay. Shoot. In olden days, a glimpse of stocking was looked on as something shocking. Now heaven knows anything goes. Good authors, too, who once knew better words, now only use four letter words, writing prose. Anything goes. Oh, Cole, Hollywood was, as you say, a tray of anatomy. They don't start their party until 9 p.m. There's no 21 club, and they can't even get any good cream tripe either. I know what I'd do without good cream tripe. Hell, yeah, after some of y'all have beat Rothschild 1929, forget about tripe. Spam would taste good. <laughs> the world has gone bad today, and good's bad today, and black's white today, and day's night today, and most guys today with women prize today. Silly jig alone. We've just Ooh. embarrassed Rita McKenzie. I'm sorry. This uh, right. you were explaining that this whole segment is entirely different it's now. Totally different. We have rewritten the show several times since then. It's awfully interesting to see that after all these years. Uh huh. <laughs> well, not that many. <laughs> not too many. A couple years. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun. Let me tell you. Well, we were talking about just before we went, we went to the clip. We were talking about um, uh, staying out of New York and being on the road, coming mm -hmm. back to New York. Uh, a lot of people come to New York to get the reviews, but they end up making their money on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, this is true. So I guess New York is prestigious, but not necessarily the most profitable. Well, it's difficult to mount a show in New York. I mean, it's, yeah. it's very, very hard, you know. And uh, we keep getting called out of town, and we keep saying, sure, you know. So uh, we keep going. And we've been touring the show for now a year and a half, and we are not, uh, we're we're taking this break to be in New York and then we're out again on tour so uh, they're talking about uh, rewriting the show and, and changing the name of it and bringing it to Broadway and we hope that's going to happen in mm -hmm. another year or so 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 um, there'll be a lot of production values and maybe even some people in the show I mean <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask you does the entire cast get along? Yes, Is I this get a along close very well cast? with myself actually <laughs> <laughs> and I hold my own hand and chant for an hour thank you Tommy <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have no fights. <laughs> <laughs> no fits and no no, fits no egos. And no egos at all. <laughs> oh God, we're we're quoting Stephen Sondheim. <laughs> we got to get out of here. Thank you, Rita oh, McKenzie, for coming again. Thank you very much. Great to it's have terrific you. Terrific to be here. Now let's take a look at another Tony nominee for best musical, uh, The Secret Garden, featuring nominees Allison Frazier and Daisy Egan. Allison singing "Hold On." Roll it.